I call Derek Ball. Thank you, sir. Um, New Zealand First has made it quite clear from the start where we stand with this bill. We do agree with the, uh, the changes that are being made, but it's not um, good enough. We, have put an, we did put an SOP in and requested support from the government, but in particular a couple of members, or one member at least of the government, that um, knows that he should be voting for or voted for the SOP. We've um, had support um, in the same way of thinking through all the opposition parties um, in regards to the SOP, and the SOP was uh, specifically in regards to the five years over 50 rule. Um, and I would just like to mention something that talk about something that Matt Ducey said in his speech just previously, sir, and that was that this was nothing but petty opposition politics, um, disagreeing with things or um, uh, thinking that it didn't, the changes never uh, are good enough. Well, I'd like him to <clears throat> have a look at the submissions and who submitted uh, and what they submitted on. And there were 13 submissions and 12 of them were in regards to the five years over 50 uh, part of the amendment. So I'd like him to uh, contact the Prime Minister of the Cook Islands and tell him that this uh, is nothing but petty politics, because it's not. It shows that the importance, the outright importance of that specific clause to the people of those three realm countries. Uh, and in fact, we had a very unique situation, sir, um, where the Prime Minister of the Cook Islands uh, and the Premier of Niue, I believe it was, uh, who came over personally and gave an oral submission. So that's, that's the importance that they place on that clause, sir. And in fact, what, what um, the Government of the Cook Islands submitted uh, was that they did support the bill, uh, but they recommend further con consideration given the five years over 50. Uh, and not only that, they made, actually made a good point, sir, where um, they pointed out that the regulatory impact statement did not actually mention the financial burden placed on New Zealand by applicants returning to satisfy the five-year residence uh, requirement who may claim welfare payments. So I think f from, from the, the get-go in the process, I mean, I know this is actually um, a long time through, going, going through the process, sir, this, this bill, but it seemed to me when I was going through it in the select committee and, and, and through these different stages that um, there wasn't actually a lot of thought put into the bill itself. And the reason why I say that is because of, the, well, Mr Naylor might disagree with that, but uh, I say to him to look at all of the submissions and, and, show, and, and see what the opposition to that clause is and who was saying it. It's not just the opposition parties. It's the people who are being affected by that clause specifically. Uh, and that's the, that's the importance of that clause, sir. What I'd also like to go on to, sir, is um, the purpose and intent. And the, reason, and the reason why I say that there wasn't much thought in it put into the bill was because the purpose and the intent of the bill is actually a, is actually a good one. Uh, and it's to recognise the very special relationship that we, as, a, as New, Ze New Zealand as a country, have with those three island nations. Uh, I mean, they are the three realm, um, <coughs> they come under the realm of, of New Zealand. Um, and even the Cook Islands, as Mr Nairo um, would know, the Cook Islands use the New Zealand dollar. So we've, we've got, we have got um, not only ancestral um, connections, people have ancestral connections with um, those islands, uh, but we have one of the largest, or the largest uh, population centre being Auckland of Pacific Islands, and in particular those three. Um, and we have economic ties, uh, they come under our protectorate. So for the bill to um, miss out on that very important part of five years over 50, that those islands have been asking for for a very, very long time. I think that um, the government assumed that this would be a, a bill that would pass through their house quite easily um, and uncontested, um, but that was not the case. Uh, New Zealand first put through a um, minority report, sir, um, stating those um, different points. Um, but I would just like to touch on um, the, the cost, the extra costs um, that the departmental report uh, from the Ministry of Social Development actually said that it would. And we're not talking about a huge number of people. 
um, that this would affect, but it would make such a, a big impact in their life um, and their families' lives, more importantly. But, I mean, if we're talking just about the administrative implications for the ministry, it's, when, in 2020, so in five years' time, we're only talking about $60,000, $65,000 administrative costs. That's the, that's the cost that um, the government is saying is one of the reasons why they won't change that clause. Uh, and we're talking about um, up to 100 additional applications for New Zealand Super in, subsequent, in, in every year, in subsequent years. And it only costs uh, the MSD around about a million dollars a year. And if you, com if you compare that with um, waste of money like the flag referendums costing $30 million, um, you can see where the, where the government puts their priority. Um, New Zealand First, like I said, sir, is supporting this bill. We support the intent, we, we support the purpose. We don't think it goes far enough and for very good reason. Um, and uh, I'd like to join um, the, the, my Labour colleagues in saying that um, to, to those people that this does affect out there, uh, we tried our hardest. We put the SOP in, but all it would take was one member across in the government's benches to vote for the SOP, but he didn't. I call